name is Vicki Lawrence. My name is Vicki Lawrence. My name is Vicki Lawrence. My name is Vicki Lawrence. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I shouldn't have had that burrito for lunch. <laughs> no, it actually is me because I've got the hair color bill to prove it. <laughs> actually, guest number one, would you please tell us what your name is and what you do? Yes, hi. I'm Joanne Worley, and I've had the... Thank you! across this wonderful United States doing the fabulous songs and shows of Mr. Jerry Herman. <laughs> well, Guest number two. Hi, my name is Lorna Lufton. I went on a concert tour singing the magnificent songs of the one and only Jerry Herman. And... <laughs> Guest number three. Hi, my name is Carol Channing. And I... I thank you. <laughs> sang Jerry Herman's Hello, Dolly on Broadway. Yes, you did. <laughs> Gosh. That's the night that the lights went out in Georgia. I'm just kidding, you guys, really. I, never mind. My guests today have all sung the songs of composer Jerry Herman from shows like Hello, Dolly, Mame, Lacajo Fall, so many others. And today we're going to meet the master himself, plus recording star Michael Feinstein, who's got a new album with Jerry. But first, please welcome three Broadway bands. Joanne Worley, Lorna Luft, and Carol Channing. They help your mouth work. <laughs> oh, this is a pushy jacket. I'm sorry. <laughs> and you being a good friend, I should never wear this. <laughs> you do look rather bright. Yes. <laughs> now, Lorna and Kel Boots here. Yes. You're the only one here that hasn't done Dolly, aren't you? I've never done Hello, Dolly. How did that happen? I don't know, but I mean, give me a minute, and I should, <laughs> I should go rehearse right now. You're not old enough, is that what you're saying? I don't sure, think, no, fine. you know something, I don't think you, you, I don't think Dolly has an age. No. I really She's, don't, I think yeah. it's such a universal piece, and I think that, first of all, that score is probably one of the greatest scores in the entire history of the American musical. I will oh. start the hand yes. on that. <laughs> You've got to have great Hello, Dolly stories. Did you she ever is have... Hello, Dolly. Yes, but does... I want to hear the oh, dirt. Oh, thank you. I want to hear yeah. the... Dis First of all, you did how many performances? 1,000? No, we lost two. count after over 3,000 performances. Over 3,000? Yes, we went all over the world, and we just... Um, uh, also, we never played to an empty seat. Isn't that heaven? I know. I know you I mean, do. That's a nice feeling, oh, isn't you it? You little like... moneymaker, you. <laughs> <laughs> Jerry Herman did it. The words and the music. I know. But tell us now. Tell us horror stories. Oh, a horror story? Yeah, the like... The first one that comes to my mind, the first one, Vicki, is before the parade passes by. Now, I've heard you sing that. It isn't as if she hasn't sung the entire score. She just never got paid She just for never it. did. <laughs> Yes, ben us. so, um, Lorna Luft, you, uh, we were see, doing Before the Parade Passes By, and there's a ramp in Hello, Dolly. Right. Yes. So I went down on the ramp and walked right off it into oh. the audience in the St. James the Theater in New York, into the audience. I dropped into a fat lady's lap. <laughs> it was, she was the sweetest, softest thing. <laughs> I was so happy that I landed in her lap and I bounced and came up and thought, now I've got to get back up there and the chorus was still singing it. So I thought, I know I'll go up the aisle and I'll go around to the back to the stage door and come back in. So I went up the aisle where the policeman is with the horse out in front, you know, and he said, you ought to be better. I said, no, no, I'm, I'm going to... So I went back to the stage, I knocked on the stage door, and the stage door a man, I, he said, who is it? With the door locked. I said, Carol Channing. He said, oh, no, she's on stage. <laughs> right now she's on stage. So I, I, there was no, I ran around, came down the aisle. Are they still singing on stage? They're still singing. <laughs> Well, you know how long that number is. Then they modge, and then they go, you know, they modge. Don't you love that in Nashville? When you modulate, they modge in Nashville. They so modge. They modge, modge up, you know? Yes. So they yes. go. 
go up a key. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. So they're still singing, and the chorus formed a line by holding each other's waists. And I was down on stage right, and I was standing there, and Charlie Carroll reached for me like a wet herring. He pulled me up, and the chorus pulled up. He pulled, and he said, everybody hang on to me. They all did, and they pulled back, and I got to the center stage for passes by. <laughs> I thought, well, of course, it's going to take the house down. They'll think it's the most remarkable thing they ever saw. And, no, oh, they just applauded. They, they, oh, no. They, they thought, thought that was, was the way the was yeah. Interesting Gower Champion choreography. Very interesting. Isn't that the end? Yes. Now, you, what's the skunk story? Are you outside oh, performing this, with the yes, skunk? Yes, yes. This is a Hello, Dolly story. Yeah, right. And I was at um, Melody Top in Milwaukee. You know, yeah. And it actually was a tent. It was outside, but it had a big cover on it. And I was doing... Um, we were in the hat shop scene, and all of a sudden, it was in the round, and all of a sudden, the audience was going, like, like a wave. And, I, and I'm doing oh, the lines and going, the 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 Japanese the audience? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's all my accents are Japanese, but you know what I mean. <laughs> they were talking when they shouldn't have been. And I look up the aisle, and I see a skunk running, dashing, and, and, and as it went under the people's legs, they went, whoa, 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 whoa. And then <laughs> Japanese people, I guess, whoa, whoa, whoa. and they go all the way around, and it was getting closer and closer. Sure enough, it came down on stage, and it sprayed on Mrs. Malloy. <laughs> no! Yes, yes! Oh, right on her. Well, it was dreadful, as oh, you know. of course, because <laughs> she's the ingenue. <laughs> she was sprayed on me. No, but you can do that to comics, but not ingenue. I know. I no. said, did Carol Channing send this skunk? <laughs> no, what happened? I said, it was such a bad smell. Mm -hmm. I said to the audience, I said, first of all, I said, oh, darling, Mrs. Muller, you really must go change your gown because that cologne is a little heavy. <laughs> and what we're going to do, we're all going to leave for a while and we'll come back. They had to air it out. It they was that did. bad. But you know my solution for the skunks? They were coming in there because people would eat popcorn. And it was going around eating it, going, oh, yeah, here's more popcorn. <laughs> and so I said, take popcorn and all way out about 50 yards around the theater, make a big circle. And they just went there and ate their popcorn and they never bothered us again. Isn't that good? Well, they're That's good very good Yes. Nice. And well, yes. Do you have horror stories like this? No, I don't have any horror stories. When I did, I did a wonderful uh, tour called Jerry Herman's Broadway Years. And you know, uh, call me crazy, but I like to work on a stage. <laughs> and so we, we were on this tour in Florida and, and, uh, we pulled up to this one uh, place that we thought was going to be a wonderful theater, and it was a tennis court. Uh-oh. And I said, what do you mean a tennis court? They said, you're going to play a tennis court. I said, what do you mean a tennis court? They said, well, we put down, we put down some um, AstroTurf. And Leroy Reams said, I have to tap. <laughs> they said, well, I, I, he said, he said, well, I have to do tap your troubles away. They said, well, you could do that on AstroTurf. You have never heard such phone calls to Jerry Herman in your life. What are we going to do? Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky it was a tennis court. No, well. We had rodeo grounds. Mr. Merrick booked us in rodeo grounds. Say to David Merrick. Oh, yes, he did. Mr. Wait. Merrick, you can't say David. Yes, Mr. Merrick. That's sacrilege. That's true. Wait, yes. You had to work out there where the horse poopies were, you mean? No, we no. Leave it to you to pick up the good words. <laughs> rodeo? I don't know. What's the... No, you see, it wasn't big enough. He sent. He said, I'm sending you out on tour because the St. James Theater in New York is too small. It was 2,700, and he said, too small. We will get, so then I realized why he sent us on tour. So he, in huge, huge arenas is what you use. Huge arenas. Oh, but if anybody can do it, you can. Now, listen, ah. I think that it is time to meet the man that we've been uh, talking about. He has won Tony Awards. He's won Grammy Awards. He's in the Songwriters Hall of Fame. I can't find anybody who will say a bad word about him, so let's get him out here. Please welcome the legendary Jerry. There are so many things to talk to Jerry about. One of these women actually told me that he gave her a diamond ring. We'll get to the bottom of that when we come back. I think I know the answer to that one. Yes? Yeah. You think? I was just going to say, I have a large that ring finger. <laughs> Says your dog, I told you 
so, so. Wave your little hand and whisper so long, dearie, dearie. Should have said so long, so long ago. Because you treated me so rotten and rough. I've had enough of feeling low. So wave your little hand and whisper so long, dearie, dearie. Should have said so long, so. Two cutes on the Mike Douglas show in 19. <laughs> we are back with Carol Channing, Lauren Luff, Joanne Worley, and our guest of honor today, Jerry Herman. And uh, you, you, uh, you write words, music, everything, which is unusual, isn't it? Yes, and it's kind of lonesome, Vicky, because I, I don't think. have anybody to say, "What do you think of that?" Yeah. To you know the way candor and ebb do. They can talk to each other. So, so where I, do you get your feedback? <laughs> I talk to myself a lot. Do you? Yeah. I'm so sorry. Yeah, yeah it's sad. Yeah. <laughs> so who'd you give the diamond ring to? Oh. <laughs> I have to tell you, Vicky, when Jerry wrote Hello, Dolly, he was in his early 20s, and nobody had any respect for him because he was so young. And they, he would say, whatever he'd suggest, he, they would say, oh, what do you know, you little thing? You're just so young. And so I said, he was over 30 years old, I told everybody. And Jerry, all of a sudden, stupid people, they began listening to him. And they said, yeah, oh, you really think so? And they would listen, and, and they felt, well, he must have a lot of experience. So after the whole tour was over, I think it was eight years all together, one tour and another and the world tour and all that, Jerry gave me this diamond for keeping my trap shut and never telling me <laughs> how young he was. That's how all women get their diamonds. <laughs> <laughs> By keeping their trap shut. Watch it. Just watch it. <laughs> Tell us about uh, putting Angela Lansbury in Mame. Well, when we were casting Mame, uh, we we uh, our our darling. Carol Channing was busy with Dolly, mm -hmm. and so she was not available, and we started looking at every other lady in show business. And one day I said, why don't you get Angela Lansbury to fly in and let's see what, what, what she looks like. I once saw her in a musical, and I thought she was great, and they, they were, producers thought I was now, did crazy. Did you know her? No, I never met her. I had seen her, her in Anyone Can Whistle, a uh -huh. musical that, that just ran a short time, but she was terrific in it. So. They did it as a favor to me. They really didn't think it was a good idea, the producers. And I, there at my door arrived Angela Lansbury. And I knew the second I opened the door that she would that be. That she was Mae. That she was Mae. And so I made a pact with her. I taught her two songs from the score. None of the other ladies who auditioned had the privilege of knowing those uh -huh. songs. So we went into the Winter Garden Theater. I snuck down into the pit. And, and got to the piano. The producers didn't know that I was down there. And she got up on stage, and she was the only voice that had ever sung those two songs except mine. And that's not very pretty, you know. <laughs> so, and, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and so there she was, singing these songs with, with somebody, playing them in the pit. And they fell out of their seats. She got the role, and then I... I waved at them from, from the pit. And Gave they, them the thumbs and, up. And Good they, choice, men. Oh, yeah. And that's how she got the part. So you have to battle the suits just like everybody else, Like huh? everybody else. Oh, yeah. Like Always everybody still? else. still? Not as Not much now. anymore. You know, they kind of listen to me now. But I was a kid, and, and uh, uh, Carol knows better than anybody that uh, experience in this business makes you respected. Yes. Not really talent or work, but experience. And I didn't have it at that time. But uh, it, was, it, was, it was a wonderful experience. So does Angela pretty much thank you for oh. changing the course of her career? Oh, we became darling friends, and uh, it, it really it made a, a glamorous singing star out of what had already been a great character actress. Yeah, but just a character actress. But I it changed her image to, out, to this glamorous, thought, gorgeous lady with a big belt voice and... So who else auditioned? Well... 
Well, one. Who? Pleasant Company accepted. <laughs> well, you, I didn't know that you, were you I was a, a child, I was a babe. But you I'm were Carol's understudy in, uh... I, uh... Vicky, here's the deal. I was a standby. Do you know the difference uh. between a standby and an understudy? No. $500 a week! <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, I told her, I said, Joanne, you'll never go on, but you're yes, such good is. company that we'd like to have you around. So I told him she never did. I never went. I was working no. at Second City, getting two paychecks at the Second City. Were you? you yes. Uh, Are really? you kidding? I didn't want you. I wanted you on that stage. Because it would have been the worst thing to go on. And there. People saved money for months to yes. go see Hello, Dolly! with Carol Channing. I didn't want them to say, and now, ladies and gentlemen, Joanne Worley. Whoa! Oh, <laughs> out of there. So oh, no. give me my money long, back. How long did you stand by for her? Well, I barely stood by. I, oh, maybe six months. Yes, six Mr. Months. Merrick finally decided he was wasting a salary, and I told him he was. <laughs> you never missed she a performance? She told me. I didn't have an understudy after she that. She never missed a performance. No, but you see, equity usually says you have to have one, so we just didn't tell him. And I was really a present. I think, because uh, they had to fulfill the equity rule, and I, I had just yes, done carnival yes. for American no. right? the Gower Champion. But this lady went on with toothaches, oh. a cold, it just didn't with matter. My foot she went right on. Yes, with a patch on my eye. And you know it only makes the audiences so dear when you do that. They feel grateful, don't they? Yes. I mean, yeah. I came out and said, I can't talk, I can't say a word. And they all applauded to let me know that they could hear me. She had a the sling one, one performance. They loved it. They were darling, and they brought remedies for me, and they had, I mean, people do that. We were playing someplace in South uh, Carolina. Uncle Jeb's remedy from the mountains came down with a candle, and I took every one of them. It, one of them worked. When, but Either people, that or you were so bombed you didn't care. <laughs> Well, we, we have to take a little break now, but when we come back, we're going to find out which one of our ladies was on Richard Nixon's hate list. And if you are really good kids, Joanne and I just might sing you a song. Just we'll be back. Might. We might. with Carol Channing and Lorna Luff, Joanne Worley, and Jerry Herman. Uh, now, who, uh, Carol, you were on Richard Nixon's hate list? Yes, isn't that a shame? How'd that <laughs> happen? <laughs> it's a dreadful shame. What did you do? Well, I have to ask you, are you proud of me? Of course. Oh, you are? Sure. Okay, you know, some people really think he's quite something, and you know. Well, but I mean, to be on a president's hate list, that's kind of cool, isn't it? I know. Well, yes, and there were no A's or B's. I mean, I was the first one on the list, because my name is Channing, Carol Channing. <laughs> you look so blank, Vicky. <laughs> I usually do. <laughs> uh, anyway, I gave a diamond to Mrs. Nixon. I can't figure out what... Mrs. Nixon, uh... I, it was during Watergate, and I was to give a to entertain the first lady, so I did. And I said, "You sure she wants me? I've caused a lot of trouble." No, she wanted. Me. So there she walked out during Watergate, and I thought, "Oh, gee, she's lovely." It was sort of like I will uphold the United States for as long as they need me. It was beautiful, and I, my heart went out to her. We all just wanted to cry. I gave her my diamond. I had to think, now, this is my diamond award. Uh, you know, I have my diamond award. I'm my own judge and jury. And I gave her my diamond award for making friends all the way from Africa to China, which I thought was pretty good to wait, think wait, of that. Carol, I'm so lost. How did you, you, get, on the, the how did you get on the hate list? I'm telling you now, Vicky. <laughs> what's, what's wrong with Vicky? <laughs> Aren't you following it? You see, they know where I am. You do? Well, I'm going to... Could you explain it to me? How did she get on the hate list? She's in Africa They gave she... this lady her own show. <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking. I borrowed that line from you. <laughs> <laughs> well, now, listen, Joanne, you and I... I want to we, I thought we heard it and I just didn't get it. You asked me. We got to hear it. Well, now I want to check. All right, I gave her my diamond award. Yeah. Okay, she took the diamond award home. Yeah. The next day, the hate list came out, yeah. and all I could figure is that Nixon had the ring appraised. <laughs> Did she make it the point? 
knew there'd be a punchline. Nikki, <laughs> there's something called a punchline. <laughs> that's that. You know, you know that story? For her. There's got to be a pony in here <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> you just <laughs> Yes, and there's a horse's ass, too. Oh. <laughs> You and I have been friends for, oh. like, too, too long. Well, actually, our too husbands have known, knew each other before us because uh, Roger was a universal as a contract player. And husband. is Roger. Oh, he's just fine. Well, we, uh, you yeah. know, we, we dated for many years before. I dated a lot of people in Hollywood. You didn't ever date Roger, did you? I he went with every girl. Roger, but <laughs> Al was a grip over at Universal. Well, I know Roger. Al very well. <clears throat> he and I were oh, very yeah. good friends. How well? Very well. <laughs> well, I, I think that you and I should go ahead and spend a little time alone because girlfriends I'm need taller to taller than that. you. Now you know, and again, I, I could deal with this. I'd like to have a little word alone with you. <laughs> All right. Yes. What would you like to discuss, Vicky? Well, well, our friendship. You know, we're lucky. We've yes. been friends for so long, and it's the wonderful thing about our friendship, Vicky, is that we can say anything to each other. Yes. Just be careful what you say, Joanne. <laughs> <laughs> we'll always be bosom buddies, friends, friends, sisters, and pals. should reject you there's me to protect you if i say that your tongue is vicious oh if i call you uncouth it's simply that who else but a bosom buddy will sit down and tell you the truth go ahead though now and again i'm aware that my candid opinion may sting <laughs> though often my Frank observations might scold. You know, I've been meaning to tell you for years, Vicki, you should keep your hair natural, like mine. <laughs> if I kept my hair natural like yours, Joanne, I'd be bald. <coughs> but, but darling, we'll always be dear companions. My crony. My mate. <laughs> Orphan Annie and Sandy like Amos and Andy. If I say that your sense of style's as far off as your you, retro. it's simply that who else but a bosom buddy will tell you the whole stinking truth. <laughs> I feel it's my duty to tell you. It's time you adjust to your age. You see, you try to be pig of my heart when you're Lady Macbeth. <laughs> exactly how old are you, Vicky? Now, come on, tell us the truth. How old do you think? I'd say somewhere between 40 and death. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but sweetie. I'll always be Alice Toklas okay. if you'll be Gertrude Stein. And though I'll admit I dished you, I gossip and gloated, but I'm so devoted. <laughs> and if I say that sex and guts made you into a star, it's simply that who else but a bosom body will tell you how Channing and Lorna Luft, Joanne Worley, and Jerry Herman. And joining us now is a multi-talented performer and a recording artist whose latest project is an album that he just recorded with Jerry Herman. Please help me welcome Michael Feinstein. Yeah. Yeah. 
Joy. Oh, you guys are so showbiz. Yeah. Michael, you started at wet. Did all piano players start at weddings? Is that like a prerequisite that you start at weddings I and bar mitzvahs? I play weddings, right? bar mitzvahs, blisses. Uh, yeah. <laughs> two people know what that is. Uh, <laughs> started playing at the age of five. Yeah. But now, did you start by doing a Louis Armstrong impersonation? Oh, well, I used to do uh, for our family gatherings for bar mitzvahs and weddings. I would do my oh. my uh, juvenile impression of. Louis Armstrong. You know. a, Hel little, oh, where is it? Oh, yeah, that's me. That's, yeah. that's me. Oh, I, I do. Hello, Dolly. <laughs> this is Lewis Dolly. It's used to get a big reaction from the relatives. You know. <laughs> I never dreamt that I'd be working with Jerry when I was a kid did singing you never, Hello, Dolly. Now, you, did you meet Jerry when you were doing the Algonquin? Yes, invasion? I was working at the Algonquin and. Um, I, I never told you this, but uh, we'd gotten a reservation like two weeks before Paul Newman was coming in. It turned out to be a dentist from Alabama, <laughs> you know, and then there was a reservation for Robert Redford and he never showed. So by the time they said Jerry Herman was coming, I didn't believe it. Yes. You know, and then Jerry was there and, and um, I was doing a medley of songs from, from Mac and Mabel. And I saw the expression on your face and I couldn't tell if it was great emotion or if you were disgusted by what I was doing. <laughs> or if you just needed to go to the bathroom. <laughs> But anyway, that's that's when we met. And, and and was he disgusted or? I think he was half for real. Yeah, didn't I come back and tell you that? I oh yes, you did. Yes, yes, he, he was. And, really speak, and speaking of coming backstage, Carol, you have a wonderful story about Irving Berlin coming he backstage. He came three times a week, Irving Berlin, to see Hello Dolly, just for the Dolly number. He'd go in standing room with two young men to hold him up, one on each side. He was so old, and nobody ever saw Irving Berlin. And do you know that the house manager said, "Would you like to meet you?" Jerry Herman, he's always in Carol's dressing room. And he said yes, and he came back. He walked right past me, opened the door, paid no attention to me, went straight to Jerry, and he said, young man, you are the future of Broadway. Ooh, and he uh, walked out. Isn't that wonderful? You want to talk about the thrill of a lifetime? That was that was it. I would because imagine. he was my idol. Oh, sure. I would imagine he's very People songwriter's idol. People hadn't seen idol. him for 50 years, Vicky. Yeah. I mean, he just stayed alone. Oh, wasn't that something? Oh. Yeah. Did he now, really talk like... Did he really talk like this? Speaking of idols and things, did you do a movie with Katherine Hepburn? Is that correct? Yes, I, I did. Very recently, <laughs> I did. What did you do with her? Well, I, I did a cameo in a new movie called This Can't Be Love that'll be on next Valentine's Day, and... Uh, what is she like? She was wonderful. I got to have dinner with her. And to make conversation, I said, you know, Miss Hepburn, I have a couple of your recordings, because she was complimenting me on mine. I said, I have some of your, your Cole Porter songs. She says, well, tell me something. How bad are they? <laughs> I said, well, I like them. She says, well, of course you'd say that to me. <laughs> and then she said, what other odd things do you collect? <laughs> It was wonderful. I should have done that at the bar mitzvah. <laughs> Quick, quickly down the line, I want to know who your musical inspiration was growing up. Uh, Michael. Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby. Yeah. And, and was Irving Berlin indeed? Irving Houston? Berlin was the first uh, musical I had ever been taken to. Was Annie Get Your Gun. And I wanted just more than anything in the world to do that. Yes. Oh, to I write hated songs that, show. Those guns that people would be able to hum. You know? Yes. Joanne? Well, I, I think uh, Ethel Merman, for heaven's sake, because she's big and loud and does, would just do it. And that's pretty much what uh, I do. <laughs> that's, what, that's what Rogers always said. You just do I it. I know. <laughs> and well. <laughs> I, get, I would have to say Harold Arlen. Really? Yes. Because Not your mommy. Um, yeah, my mother, but I mean, as far as, you know, musical influences around my house and things like that, um, I would have to say that her influence was Harold Arlen. Yes. And Carol, did you have a musical influence, a favorite? Yeah, Ethel Waters. Oh, mm. I, she was enormous. She walked down to the front mm. and she sang, Supper Time. I, oh. That's a great imitation, Carol. <laughs> we're going to hear from Lorna Luft about the unforgettable night that she spent with Jerry and what she oh. went through to make it happen. We'll be back. <laughs> I don't know. I think we should take it on the road.
explode, whatever it is. Welcome back, kids. Today we're talking to some of uh, our favorite, very favorite Broadway stars, Carol Channing, Lorna Luff, Joanne Worley, Jerry Herman, and Michael Feinstein. So, Lorna, tell us about the unforgettable night with Jer. This was an unforgettable night. I was doing, and still am doing, the national tour of Guys and Dolls. And uh, I was in Toronto, and I got a call from Jerry, and he said, how would you like to play the Hollywood Bowl? Because they are honoring me. Me. The Hollywood Bowl is going to do a night of all of my music. And my heart stopped because that's probably one of the greatest venues that you can ever play. And I said, I would be there if it killed me. And I did my two shows on the Saturday. I got, I didn't go to sleep. I got on a plane at four or five o'clock in the morning. I flew to Los Angeles. I went straight from the airport to the Hollywood Bowl and we did the show that night we did the dress rehearsal and we did the the main show the the next night and i got back on a plane the next night and flew back so i could be back at guys and dolls but i promise you it was one of the most amazing experiences i've ever been through because there was so much love and respect and sheer adoration on that stage for Jerry Herman. Mm. We, we all, all of us came from other places. Carol came from other, we all went out of our way. We said we would kill to be with him on that night and we, we were there for you. Yes. Uh, Feel you? Yeah. You? Can you, now, I wouldn't have missed that night for, it, for anything. The song that you're going to sing for us today, did you sing this song I that night? I sang that at the Hollywood Bowl, And yeah. Jerry, would you like to set the song up for Lorna? Yes, it's from Mac and Mabel, which is one of my favorite offspring. And it's a song that Mabel sings when she's leaving Mac. She stands on the prow of the ship on her way to Europe, oh. and she is trying to forget him. And... Well, I think we should probably hear this song, yes. kids. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, singing Time Heals Everything from Mac and Mabel, which is your favorite score, I believe, isn't it? Here is Lorna Luft. Time heals everything Tuesday, Thursday Time heals everything If I'm patient, the break will mend And one fine morning, the hurt will end So make the moments fly Autumn, winter I'll forget you by next year Tuesday, Thursday, April, August, autumn, winter, next year, some year, time heals everything.
This year I get to celebrate Christmas with a really nice bunch of people. Robin Dolores Hope, Celine Dion, Wendy and Carney Phillips, Ed McMahon, and Marie McGovern. Celebrity Christmas on the next Vicky. Join us. We're back. Let's chat a moment with Jerry Herman and Michael Feinstein. Uh, guys, can you tell us about this album? Sure. Uh, this is an album that features Jerry playing the piano. It's, it's uh, uh, of course, a whole album of his songs, and I do the vocals. And uh, um, I wanted to do an album featuring the composer at the keyboard because it's always a very special way that a creator plays his songs. Yes. And, and you guys did this album live. We That's did it live. Really you know, today everything is overdubbing, but everything that we did was live and in very few takes, really. And I think it's the definitive album of my work because it was done that way. And there's, there are no extras. It's, it's me playing, Michael singing his heart out, and we love it a lot. And, you're, and you wore your Jerry Herman tie. Yes, <laughs> all of it. Nicole Miller, that's... Hello Dolly, Mae, Mac and Mabel, The Best Jerry. of Times is Now, Lacage. <laughs> Very cool. So, see, now the name of the album is? Michael Feinstein sings the Jerry Herman songbook. And well, we're gonna... what a fabulous <laughs> idea for a title, guys, really. <laughs> we thought well, hard well. about that title, you know. And you're going to do for us what? A medley from Mame. Oh, cool beans. Hit it, guys. <laughs> Light the candles, get the ice out, roll the rug up, it's today. Though it may not be anyone's birthday, and though it's far from the 4th of July, I know that this very minute has history in it, we're here. It's a time for making merry, and so I'm for making hay to the grand of dance your shoes off. Did she need a stronger hand? Did she need a lighter touch? Was I soft or was I tough? Did I give enough? Did I give too much? The moment that she needed me, did I ever turn away? Would I be there when she called, if she walked into my life? the tree before my spirit falls again fill up the stocking i may be rushing things but deck the halls again now for we need a little christmas right this very minute candles in the window carols at the spinet yes we need a little Christmas, right this very minute. It hasn't snowed a single flurry, but Santa, dear, we're in a hurry. So climb down the chimney, turn on the brightest string of lights I've ever seen. Slice up the fruit cake. It's time we hung some tinsel on that evergreen bough. For we need a little music, need a little laughter, need a singing ringing through the rafter and we need a little snappy happy ever after need a little christmas no. there's a thank you you can give life if you live
Michael's mommy and daddy. Mr. Michael's dad and Mrs. Ryan. Are you too proud of him? Yes, very proud. Oh, it's good to see you. And this is Charles Lowe, and he happens to be married to the wacky Carol Channing for how many years? Only 35. You guys are too adorable. It's 38! Thanks to all of you guys. 38! 38. Oh, Carol is correcting you. It's 38. It uh, seems like 35. It's just flown by. I want to thank all of you guys. It's been so much fun talking to you. And the name of the new album is Michael Feinstein Sings the Jerry Herman Songbook. And play us out, maestro, please. The best of times is now. What's left of summer but a faded rose. Stay tuned. Steve Edwards and Cindy Garvey are up next. It's live in L.A., and it's right here on KCAL-TV Channel 9.